uh, question uh, 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 relates to, uh, has anyone looked into the best way um, to recover compacted soils, um, uh, whether it's uh, deep rippers, cover crops, chisel plows? Um. <clears throat> well, I guess the uh, initial thought is um, when you look at some of the uh, cover crop species rooting depths, uh, they, they'll far exceed what uh, a lot of tillage implements will will go. So, I mean, if you're if you've got a uh, if you've evaluated a soil that's uh, deeper than what a uh, tillage implement's going to go, then uh, you know some uh, cereals uh, show some real deep rooting depths. Um, again, we're back to kind of evaluating you know how how deep the compaction is, the severity of it. But uh, you know, nature has a way of kind of repairing that with root development. I mean, if you if you're really at extreme compaction or are, are trying to uh, improve some soil subsurface compaction your annual ryegrass is probably the one that you know people have looked at for for that but you know at the same time annual ryegrass has its own challenges as far as uh, you know glyphosate resistance or, or, or you know control in the springtime so and, and another crop like milo you know grain sorghum uh, that may be another crop but you know I, I would tend to uh, many times producers think they're doing tillage much deeper than what they actually are when they're out there. Uh, you know, when, when they get out the uh, tape measure, they're kind of measuring from the heaved area, not so not so much the uh, soil surface. So I, I would tend to try to do it naturally instead of uh, instead of a tillage. Thank you, Charlie. Can I can I comment on that? Please, yeah. I agree totally with Charlie. The and my farmers up here, you know, accuse me of being anti tillage, and I'm not anti tillage. I am sort of the way we have 4R in nutrient management. I kind of talk about the the four T's of tillage, so the right tool at the right time at the right depth and stuff. And too often, <clears throat> these deep rippers and stuff that they want to use are are done when the soil conditions are not in very good shape, like late fall after a a wet thing, because that's when they cause the problem. If they waited until after wheat the next year or something when the conditions were drier, you know, that, that doesn't bother me near as much. My concern with deep tillage trying to break compaction is you can actually drive compaction deeper. And then if I needed a, a 16 inch shank this year, do I need a 18 the next year and a 20 inch the year after? So you have to think about that because as soon as you loosen the soil to that deep, and then you drive something else over it that that's heavy, you could drive that down so quickly. Can I add one more thing? So I agree with both wholeheartedly. The best way to do it is natural. And um, I always like to tell growers that if tillage has not solved your problem in the 20 years that you've been farming, it's probably not gonna start this year. So, I mean, if you're constantly battling these compaction issues, um, change it up. And so one of the things I talked about was, con uh, you know, control traffic. That's a, an easy way, I think, to ease into it because then you could still till your headlands and, you know, the areas that were over overdriven, you know, if you, if you must, but you're not tilling areas that don't need tilled. Because if you think about your whole field, there's areas that have not been compacted because they haven't had a tire on them or, and you're just disturbing that system when it doesn't need to be disturbed. Nature is best um, left to its own devices rather than us as humans trying to um, think that we can engineer it better when history tells us we cannot. Can That's I awesome. respond? Can I respond again? Because this is really important. <laughs> sure. Um, <clears throat> I was just working this summer with some of my guys on really tough soils and they were strip tilling on, on soils that really can't take corn otherwise. And again, I told you how wet the harvest was. I've been out with them the last two weeks as they've tried to get this crop off and shocking how little rutting damage you see in those strip tilled fields versus their neighbors around them with giant ruts everywhere. So the system is part of the whole package two that you need to consider. Absolutely. Th these are really great points and uh, thank you all. The last question we have from Michael is how dependent is soil type 
on compaction and rate of recovery, or how dependent is compaction and rate of recovery on soil type, I would imagine. I think Linda you also touched on that a little bit on the different types of soils uh, in terms of the benefit they can uh, realize from manures as well as the potential for compaction that they might observe as well. Right. I guess I haven't actually looked at any specific data, but you know, if you think about a sand particle, um, you know, those aren't necessarily like there's only so much that they can compact versus a clay. Um, if that's wet or a silt loam, those particles can just push really close together um, and become a hard pan pretty quickly. And so, and those are a little bit more difficult to recover from compaction. Um, but yeah, it's definitely dependent because every soil type has a different ability to maintain and um, build a soil structure. But I think it's, it, you got to recognize that sandy soils can still compact. Some of the toughest soils I've ever soil sampled in for nutrients are, are sandy soils that have been compacted over a lot of time. Right. I would definitely agree with that. Um, time is, you know, always that um, key factor. If you, soil can only take so many beatings, maybe sand can take a couple more beatings than clay can, but um, it's still going to reach the end of the road. 